when I was about nine years old, I had what is now called a, a near-death experience, or NDE. Um, although that phrase didn't exist at that time, it was quite a long time ago. Um, and there's been a substantial increase in interest in near-death experiences, or NDEs, um, since then. And that's inspired me to um, share my uh, story and, and to say just a couple of words um, about them in general, as uh, someone who's a psychologist and had a, studied um, NDEs for a number of years. Um, for those who are not familiar with the, with the term, um, as, as the name suggests, they, they are experiences that are usually happen um, when, when someone is close to death, but who then recovers and um, describes the experiences that they had um, during that time. Um, common uh, features of such experiences include um, changes in the sense of time. Uh, some people find time seems to speed up and a lot happens within a short time. Um, for others, um, they experience timelessness, as if time has stopped. You also get changes in understanding, um, either about their own lives or about life in general. Um, and most people have some intense feelings, um, often of um, inner peace um, or joy. Um, and senses also tend to be uh, very vivid, more intense. Uh, and some people get the feeling of being surrounded by a bright light, a brilliant light. Um, another common one is the feeling of leaving the body. Uh, the consciousness leaves the body and, and moves um, either in the near vicinity or perhaps in a hospital or something like that. But sometimes um, experience consciousness moving um, many thousands of miles um, to the other side of the world. It's also quite common for people to experience um, deceased friends and family, and sometimes even um, mystical beings. Uh, another common feature is um, a life review, uh, in, in which they both experience many features of their own lives, but also how those were experienced by other people, uh, the people around them, for example and they get to evaluate the effects that they had on themselves and on others. Um, and then another common feature is that of uh, either seeing or even going through um, a tunnel of light. And then they often end when um, someone or something sends them back um, to, their, to their physical body. And so consciousness re-enters the physical body again. Uh, now, other experiences are possible, but these, I think, are the, um, are the commonest ones. Um, so to give the background to my own little uh, near-death experience, um, it was while I was on a holiday um, with my family uh, in um, a, a town called Scarborough in northeast England. And one day um, we went to uh, an open-air swimming pool. Uh, and this was, as I say, this was about when I was nine years old. Um, I was very excited, never been to such a thing before. And um, I got changed very quickly, quicker than the rest of my family and went rushing out onto the pool side. Um, and in front of me, there was a slide and the slide went into the water, even more excited. So um, I ran up the slide, went down and into the water. And it was at that point that I discovered that the slide went into the deep end of the pool and I couldn't swim. Um, um, and, and as you might expect, I, I, I panicked, um, I struggled, I was thrashing around in the water, um, I sank below the surface, I was choking and I kept going down. Um, I was a skinny little lad and, 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 and sank quite quickly below uh, the surface. But then, then I suddenly found myself um, in a state of calm 
and, and kind of filled with a deep peace, which was at odds with what was apparently going on. Um, and I also went from just seeing the kind of the murky water of this swimming pool to being surrounded by this brilliant white light. And, and time seemed to stop. I had a sense of complete timelessness. In fact, I have no idea how long um, this, this episode took. Um, because the next thing I knew, I was actually being hauled out of the swimming pool um, by um, some adults um, uh, who, who had noticed that I was drowning. And, and so they pulled me out of the pool. And that was when I had to face um, my parents. And, and they were not at all happy. At any rate, although it doesn't count as a profound near-death experience, or NDE, um, in fact, there is such a thing as um, a scale for NDEs. Um, Bruce Grayson uh, developed the Grayson uh, near-death experience scale, which measures how deep the experience was, what features that it had. And that scale is out of 32 points. You get points for the different experiences that you have in an NDE uh, with a very deep NDE with lots of features scoring 32 points. And then it goes you know, down, down from there. So, so, so this experience that I just described to you uh, on that scale has nine points, which some researchers in the field um, call slightly disparagingly, I think, um, a superficial NDE. However, it still, that experience still did what many um, such NDEs um, do. Um, it expanded my view about what life is. Um, and although I was nine years old, I couldn't really put it into words. Um, at that age, I just thought this is how things are. Um, but it did lead me into further research and to and want to know more about NDEs. Uh, but that, that came much later in life. But that's a common feature of, um, of these kind of experiences as well. And, and it also happened that um, um, after that point, I, I, I lost my fear of water. Um, and whenever I'm submerged in water, and ever since then, um, I felt um, kind of embraced by a benevolent presence. Uh, and it may be the reason why um, I spent 40 years as a scuba diver and, in fact, became um, um, a diving instructor. Uh, who knows? It, it, it certainly seemed that way at any rate. Um, it didn't, however, lead to the kind of profound life transformations that the deeper NDEs, which score you know, closer to 32 points on this scale, uh, usually do. Uh, some people completely lose their fear of death. Um, uh, some people kind of transform their life and change their life completely. Um, others change their, you know, kind of their spiritual beliefs and ideas about, about life and about the afterlife and so on. Um, however, when I combine my experience with um, research into the subject, which is now widely available. There's a lot of studies have been done now and a lot of research and, and it's now widely available. Uh, I'm left with one or two kind of uh, key ideas um, about it. Um, and the first one is that um, they're not hallucinations. Um, there are sceptics, there are people who say um, such experiences are only due to, for example, the, the brain being starved of oxygen. Um, and I think the sum total of research now suggests that's, that's not a very good explanation. It, it doesn't really adequately account um, for the kind of experiences that people have. And I think there are, are lots of reasons for thinking that. But, but at any rate, um, that's what I conclude. I think that's now a very unlikely explanation for NDEs. Instead, I think um, the evidence points more to the idea that what we call death can be looked on as, as more of a transition of consciousness from this material kind of uh, world into a non-material 
afterlife. Um, um, so rather than it being a final ending of consciousness, something continues. And I've actually uh, put together some links to research studies and reviews and um, interesting books uh, down below um, this frame uh, for anyone who's interested. And if you've never had an NDE, um, uh, and, and about 5% of the adult population would appear to have if, if surveys uh, are, are anything to go by, um, I, I would suggest having a look at them. Um, Look at those links, not just because it's interesting, uh, although it is, and strongly suggests that there may be um, a life after the moment that we call death. And that is obviously um, extremely interesting. But I think it can help decide or help people decide what's important now. How should one live one's life now? Um, and that, in fact, seems to be um, one of the commonest messages that people come back is is to do with how people should live live their lives um, now, um, especially if they've had a deep near death experience. And what uh, what is actually quite a common thing for people to say is, it's the little things that matter. It's the small kindnesses that people do. Um, it's the it's the small circumstances in which people show love from one person to another. These are the important things, not big or grandiose schemes. It's the little things. Um, and in fact, um, in, in, in 1980, um, I was living in Vancouver and I ha had the good fortune to go to a talk by um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Um, not on near-death experiences, I should add, but at any rate, um, it's, a, it's a, an, a nice way of, I think, ending um, this little uh, a talk. Um, he said something like, try to be a bit kinder. Every day, try to be a little kinder. And I think that's actually also a good summary of what a lot of people bring back from their near-death experiences. Anyway, that's, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching.